Well, I can't remember when I last saw one of these in a box. Probably January 1982. So when he said he was sending a... a Mustang 3000 in, I was expecting it to be the usual kind of one, with the instructions, may as well use the power lead, it's got the original mic, we won't touch that till the end. wider than any other set so this is the type of connector we can provide the square round one but there are two other connectors in use So uh, it's still one to worry about. Right, well I'm not going to open it up yet. So the usual criteria, if it's doing more than three point if we can get more than three point six watts out of it, we don't alter the ballast resistor. If we can't get three point six watts out of it, then we will change the ballast resistor problem is it's a 3 watt resistor and asking for what's to come out of the set. So we'll use a standard Cybernet replacement mic, Cybernet 1002F chassis, did I say that right? 002F. Oh, one of my favourite sets. some really useless controls like the Delta Tune. Might as well connect the extension, the uh, wall mounted speaker which we use as a PA test speaker. Might as well connect that. Testing one two, testing one two one two. Good PA works. Right, picture in picture on. Three watt scale. Connect up to the test gear. <clears throat> Just over the three watts. It's back, we can say it's dead on three watts. Channel 40. could say 2.95 but we'll say 3 watts, channel 1, 3 watts, so it's nicely balanced at 3 watts. Low power if I can find the switch, Two hundred and twenty milliwatts, back to full power. Oh, 
and the current consumption is on low power. And the current consumption is 1385. Deviation. Wallo. Wallo. It's reading four on this test set. So that's been screwdriver. We'll check with the other test set. Frequency. Seven seven nine zero nine zero. Hardly out at all. Let's look at receive. Set it to being off frequency so that it's fair. Oh nine oh. Test gear into the extension speaker socket. Show the sign on meter and oh, 0 0.24, 0 0.2, 0 0.62. Squelch is the only let down on this chassis. Let's see how it works. Twenty seven microvolts full and threshold Not point two four. So the S meter should be showing S nine, just on the plus of plus thirty. So S nine on this radio is forty five microvolts, which is too low, or too shit sensitive, shall we say? <clears throat> And on transmit, we should be in the centre of the red zone. Slow. Good, so we've got a nice working set there, which needs a service. And it only seems to have had the deviation screwdriver. Very kind of it to transmit on three channels at once. I plan to do one of these actually, and because we've got one on the shelf of, of my own, but uh, now this has come, mine can wait. You don't see many. So we've got the 3 watt ballast resistor, very clean set, when you consider these are 40 years old.
Right, we'll just check the VCO. It can wander on these over a 40 year period. So it should be three volts. Oh no, it should be two. It's supposed to be on channel one. Right, that needs to come down a fraction. And I'll transmit. It should also be two, and we'd be adjusting the red trimmer there if it wasn't. But it is. So transmit was okay, receive wasn't. And we're in the kind of ballpark for where we'd expect it for channel 40. Good. Uh, so. So that is a double tick, and it's a, a cross and a tick. It was low RX. I've got to put it in the wrong box. See if we can get anywhere with this transmitter. <coughs> so just about a full scale deflection. We're on channel 20. Definitely peak. 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 Needs a bit more heat. No, to change the ballast resistor on that. <clears throat> so no sooner had I started putting this resistor in, the phone rang. And bear in mind when I say phone, it's always landline. But mobile phones don't work here. I'm glad about that as well because it means people can't fiddle with them. So we've taken out the factory original, which is a three watt resistor, put a six watt one in. So then it has a fighting chance of delivering 4 watts of power. Helps we turn the radio back on. 3.5. Just go back on these. Look, 3.5 what we're going to get with that resistor change. Probably be a bit more than that when we've uh, when the radio is cooled down. Let's make sure these air spaced ones are, are properly spaced.
Yeah, that one wasn't, was it? Four watts. Three point nine on channel forty four. Go back to channel 20. Look at the current consumption 1.54 and the low power 9 adjustable on these sets now. Oh, 280 milliwatts. Right, we'll go to the frequency counter. Bring that up a fraction. Oh yeah, this phone call, it was... Um, um, you've made a £300 uh, transaction on Amazon and a £1,200 transaction on Amazon. No, I haven't. And I'm not going to press 1, I'm not going to press 2, because it's a scam. I bet it, I mean, I bet it comes from India. Very disappointing, isn't it, that a lot of this comes from India. And how many rich people are there in... Uh, oh, I can't think of the country now. Anyway, they've all... Uh, They've all inherited about 135 million and they want to share it with me. Right, I'm going to turn, we'll transfer over to the test set and just look at what the deviation is on the other test set. Just go back to our main meter on this one. <clears throat> now, we thought it was about four on the other test set. Wow, it is it's four. You're right, well, let's get it a chance of making on the channel we're on rather than the ones out of the side as well. Wallow. It isn't louder, it's wider. It only becomes louder when you're under the deviation level. So the only people it becomes louder to when it's at four are people on fidelity thousands. Or other sets that are as wide as a barn door. See what this test set makes of it now. Wall wrong mode. Wall it makes it exactly as it should be. So it was not lying, and it was four kilohertz. And it's now two point two to two point five kilohertz. Which is where it should be. Let's do the RF meter while we're at it. So we know the set's doing four watts now, and we do when it's in low in high power. Need to just come up a bit if it will do it. Centre of the red zone it is. So that's that done. Okay, let's go to receive. We'll now put the signal generator on the correct frequency which it is now is 
and we'll go over to the oscilloscope and check the detector. So we've got 100 microvolts on the signal generator. Let's see if the detector is anywhere near. No. So that one we made it garbled. So when we tune the receiver now, it'll actually be less sensitive than it was before. Go to the cyanide meter and see whether that's the case. Make sure we've got the RF gain at full, we have, yep. No change. No change. No change. The biggest signal on for those. That one feels broken. Yep, that one's broken. Okay, so I'll now have to go to Mr. Chippy's bench for that repair. So although it was performing absolutely great, the problem is if I can't verify it's in exactly the right position, I haven't done my job. I can't just say, oh, uh, it's about the right place, it's near enough. We'll come back to this in about two hours. Okay, so we're back from Mr. Chippy's domain. And we've taken the coil from a scrap Mustang 1000. What I didn't want to end up doing is taking it off a fake Amstrad. thing is it was working so well and you you know you start to think it must be in the right position even though it's broken but I can't risk it not being in the right position Okay, we haven't got any receive anymore. Okay, we've changed it a second time. So clearly, that was the reason this scrap Mustang 1000 was scrap. And that's always the danger, isn't it? So this time, I managed to find a scrap Mustang 2000. We haven't We've probably only got half a dozen 002F chassis anyway. Um, three of them are fake Amstrads. And now that's the last of those coils. 
People mistake this for the detector and then they use a screwdriver and ruin it. So let's see whether we can get any ground on this. So amazingly, the position it's come out of the set in is about the right position. So I'm just going to recheck the detector. And then recheck the other IFs. Okay, I'm satisfied that's now working. Let's set 100 microvolts on the S meter. Oh, that's uh, being very generous. And then the squelch. So squelch to full. And on the test set of 100 microvolts, that's 30. Want it a bit stronger than that? <laughs> but not as strong as that. right balancing acts on this chassis you know squelch is the only let down that's it we've got 100 microvolts so now look for threshold on the radio <clears throat> so one hundred microvolts, naught point two six microvolts, S meter to hundred. That tune controls about that it's center it's center for correct. I prefer it when they've got a switch on them. Right, let's see what we've got on now on the receive. So <clears throat> so it was reading superb but the detector was out and the IF coil was broken so we've got 0 0.27 0 0.23 0 0.72 so although this was marginally more sensitive the detector was out so it was would have been garbled and I don't know what the IF being out would have caused but it certainly been probably lopsided on receive may have been broken at exactly the right place but I can't risk that 
you can't send back radios with broken cores. So, um, that is just as excellent as you expect. I'm really looking forward to going around Scratchy Corner with this. I'm not going to test the speaker, the, the speaker. I'm not going to test the microphone until we do the on-the-air test. So, ballast resistor. That's brought us. I'll just do a quick transmit check. Helps if I'm in the right mode. He's actually saying 4.4, .4, but it sets as cold as anything. So we've certainly got there. Doing the full 4 watt output. And once again, we've had to up that ballast resistor from a 3 watt one to that 6 watt one. And he's 3 watts specified, you know, I don't know what they were playing out there, but anyway, it doesn't matter, that fixes the problem. <coughs> and we'll put the lid on. But it's had the mystery deviation fiddler in it, hasn't it? You must have had a mate with the Fidelity Thousand. Tell me when it's louder. I just kind of half expect when they're in a box like that that they're going to work more or less spot on. But you know, how do you, how can you expect there's going to be a broken core? That's been that could have been broken on at the factory. It could have also been somebody thinking that's the detector seen that before and then going in with a screwdriver which then breaks it it would be nice to think it was going to do more than three watts and it'd be nice to think that it wasn't doing four kilohertz deviation courtesy of the screwdriver expert so you know you pick up a tired old set and it's spot on and you pick up something immaculate like this and it isn't spot on. So we know more of those coils, so the next one that's broken, we can't do anything with. But of course we do buy in scrap chassis. So we've got another of those g Cole GT868s, which we never did the on-the-air test with because I've got problems with the editing software. So we're going to do a double on-the-air test with that one instead. It's from the same source. Uh, I want to see how it works before we touch it. And I want to see, before it, and it was virtually spot on the last one. And then we'll see what it's like when it we've gone through the alignment now do you know Roger it's five o'clock they're all having their tea their mummies have called them in There we go. You get off that chicken box and have your tea. Beautiful, beautiful set from 1981. Mustang 3000 in its box. Thanks for watching.